Okay, in this video I want to do some multivariable calculus stuff, and I want to show that a limit does not exist in this problem. So I'm going to just go over kind of the basic idea and do one concrete example. So first off, let me refresh you from good old first semester calculus. And remember in first semester calculus, so here's my function f of x in blue. Um, in this case, the limit as x approaches a of f of x, we would say that limit doesn't exist because as you approach a from the left side, it's not going to be the same value as if we approach a from the right side. So remember the limit from the left side has to equal the limit from the right side. If not, then we say that the limit simply does not exist. The idea is the same. Um, you know, when you start doing things in three dimensions, but there's just a little more freedom that makes things a little trickier. So suppose in my example, let's look at the limit as xy approaches um, 0, 0. We'll do x squared over x squared plus y squared. Um, notice in this case, if you just try to plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0, you're going to get something undefined. Okay, we'll get 0 over 0. So we're going to have to figure out um, a way to do that. L'Hopital's rule is not really applicable because that's kind of used for functions with one variable. So, because um, now, you know, what's going to happen with the derivatives? Are you going to do partial derivatives? What do you do there? So that's one of the issues. To, to revisit this idea about the left-hand limit not being equal to the right-hand limit, um, that's going to change a little bit in three dimensions. Okay, so, you know, we could graph this function x squared over x squared plus y squared, whatever it looks like. Um, now, the idea is x and y are approaching the point 0, 0. Okay, so I'm going to make a little picture in 2D. Okay, so the x coordinate's getting closer to zero and the y coordinate's also getting closer to zero. Again, in the 2D case, the only way you can get close to this number a is either, well, you approach it from the left or you approach it from the right. Nothing else can happen. Um, <clears throat> to approach this point zero, zero, though, in the plane, I mean, you can kind of come in from any different direction you want as long as x is getting closer to zero and y is also getting closer to zero. So this notion of left and right doesn't, um, doesn't quite sync up. But the idea is the same. Maybe if we come along the positive y-axis, we can show that our limit is equal to some number. And maybe we can approach that point 0, 0, maybe along the x-axis. Again, that would be approaching 0, 0. And maybe we'll get out a different number. And then it's kind of the same idea. You're approaching from one direction. The limit from one direction doesn't equal the limit from another direction. And that's a way that you can show that the limit does not exist. So again, you know, uh, it's, it's basically just an analog to the idea in 2D for a limit not to exist. Okay, so a lot of times, again, we kind of have choice in what we do here. A lot of times the trick, at least at the beginning, um, or to get started, again, this is only going to work since we're approaching 0, 0. But maybe we approach, um, so first off, let's approach, you know, let's approach this point 0, 0 let's say along, do we want to do the x-axis or the y-axis first? I don't guess it really, um, it really matters here. So let's just approach along the x-axis first. So if we're approaching along the x-axis, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us for sure that the x value um, will vary. But along the x-axis, um, we know that y equals 0. So our original function, right, x squared over x squared plus y squared, if we approach along the x-axis, if y is going to be 0, our limit of xy approaching 0, 0, well, really that's going to be equivalent, I should say, of x squared over x squared plus y squared. That's really going to be the same thing as the limit as, well, we still want x to approach 0, but now all I'm going to do in my formula is I'm going to replace y 
with 0, because that's going to be its value along the x-axis. Um, so as I approach the point 0, 0 along the x-axis, y will be 0. So my formula really is just going to simplify into x squared over x squared. Whoops. Well, obviously 0 squared is just 0. And if we take the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared over x squared, well, x squared over x squared is just 1. And the limit um, of a constant is just the constant. So if we approach along the x-axis, our limit is going to be equal to 1. OK, so we've approached from, from, from one direction. Let's maybe pick a different direction. Uh, maybe let's approach along. So we'll approach this point 0, 0. But maybe let's do it along the y-axis. Well, obviously, again, um, if we go along the y-axis now, you know, the y will vary. But along the y-axis, we know that x equals 0. So our limit, xy, that was approaching 0, 0 of x squared over x squared plus y squared, that's going to be the same thing as the limit of y approaching 0. And again, we, we do the same thing. We just simply plug in zeros for x's. Well, you would get 0 squared over 0 squared plus y squared. Um, so the limit is y approaches 0 of 0 over y squared. And again, we don't actually, um, you know, when we take the limit um, as y approaches 0, we're, we're taking values close to 0, but never actually equal to 0. Well, if you take a number close to 0 and square it, and then take 0 and divide it by that number, hey, we're still going to get 0. So what we've justified now is that this limit does not exist. We've, we've approached from two different directions, so similar to first semester calculus. And we've shown that the limit from one direction is not equal to the limit from another direction. So since the limits are not equal, we can immediately conclude that the limit does not exist. Okay, so a, a one remark here for sure. Suppose, you know, my first limit was 1 and my second limit was 1. That still doesn't mean that the limit's 1. It means if the limit exists, it's 1. But maybe we could approach from some different direction, you know. You don't have to approach from the y-axis or the x-axis. You basically just need to use any curve that passes through the origin. So I could even approach along the line, say, y equals, or excuse me, the curve y equals x squared, because that still approaches the origin. So I'll definitely do some more of these, maybe some that are a little more complicated, where you're just not approaching along the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, again, in this video, what I really want you to catch more than anything is just, um, it's just, Again, very analogous to the 2D situation. The left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit. Well, same idea. We're approaching from different directions, and the limits aren't the same. That means the limit doesn't exist. So, all right. Um, I think this stuff is, can definitely be a little confusing the first few times you see it. I hope it makes sense. If not, as always, feel free to post comments and questions, my friends. All right. Good luck out there.